our third and last speaker for the new uh, for the show number three uh, is a uh, great honor of mine because uh, me and this gentleman Sergey have a long history known each other for a while um, he's a longtime max artist that's how I met him he's also a fellow maker uh, in electronics and, and just making things so we have a very uh cohesive mindset um as co-workers um and like i had uh i may have mentioned before i don't know i did but basically almost every basically every show that the fuse effects new york office works on the, he is the only person in the studio who will touch every show that comes through our doors even if it's there's no cg needed for it comp will need tracking or something um and he's been a, it just the stuff that he's been doing the last bunch of years in his capacity as the uh tracking supervisor at fuse effects has been a huge aid for me personally and the animation guys when we have to match move something a lot of times it could be handled by he does most of the work for us, <laughs> which I have to admit, which is great. Um, and he does, there's a lot of tight integration with what I do with him because I do a lot of the blended camera work whenever we need blended cameras from real, from real camera rigs that they want, the client may want one seamless camera. Um, and the areas that this guy covers in his work uh, ranges from everything from camera tracking rigid object, object tracking, deforming object tracking, asset scanning, and location and environment scanning. So basically anything that integrates or bridges the physical world and our digital world, he's involved with. So it's my distinct honor to uh, present our third presenter. <laughs> Who, who is this magical guy? I, right, right. I, I want to see him. Is he, is he in, the, in the backstage? Right there. I love it. You owe me Thank you, Kim. Appreciate now. it. That's really nice of you to say. And uh, uh, let's just roll the video <laughs> if we can. Because <laughs> that was like an intro to end all intros, my God. Yeah, we can roll it. So we can start with part A. Yeah, let's uh, start with uh, My name is Sergey. I'm a supervisor of Fuse Effects. And I wanted to give you a glimpse of the world of tracking and hopefully show you that tracking isn't just tedious and uh, stressful discipline. It certainly is that, but it can also be creative. And if you are into problem solving, it has that in spades. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to apologize for my voice. I've recently lost it, but I will do my best to announce my terrible English. Um, <laughs> So I recently had an opportunity to work for an Amazon show called The Terminalist. Um, and I wanted to show you how one of the shots was put together for him. So this particular shot uh, was important for the storyline. And if uh, you haven't seen the show, I won't give away any spoilers, but it's safe to say that since it was one of the last shots of the establishing episode, uh, it carried some weight for the future episodes. It needed to be as seamless and engaging as possible. So in the shot, uh, the lead character played by Chris Pratt is arriving at his house. And that portion of the shot was shot on a physical location. Um, and the scene action uh, is that he gets out of the car, runs inside of the house, and that portion was shot on a soundstage. So the tracking and layout department uh, was challenged um, with making that residual stitch as seamless as possible. And while we often do multi-camera stitches, uh, the challenge for this particular shot was that the street footage, part A, uh, and the soundstage footage, part B, that dressing was very different from each other. And on top of that, uh, there was no scene survey made, um, and we were kind of flying blind. I had to come up with a way to track the part, Q, uh, part A camera and have that scene match real world scale and create geometry for it. So usually track and laser and LiDAR uh, scanning to gather scene data and get textures for the environment as well as measurements, etc. And we use that data to cross-reference our tracking points and establish locations. But I think a uh, well-rounded tracker is someone who can uh, solve a shot without relying on LiDAR. Um, it's very convenient and it's great when you can get it, but uh, when you're given a shot, um, 
without LiDAR or survey data or lens information, you will need to think fast because the production train does not stop. And this was the case here. We had no info besides the shoot location. So I did what any internet stalker would do. I hit Google Maps and tried to get a sense of the environment for the street view. Well, I was surprised to see that the street view actually had the hero house blurred out. And I'm guessing it's because it's a shoot location. Now, Google Earth uh, has come a long way, and its uh, online-based application called Google Earth Studio has a few tricks up its sleeve, and um, I was able to utilize a few of those for my needs. Uh, it seems to have been designed by people who actually know a thing or two about UI design and uh, common sense animation tools. Anyway, um, after using those tools and animating a survey shot to assist me in creating an environment for our Part A shot, uh, I rendered out the animation as if I was flying a drone on set. Once I had my drone like survey shot rendered out of Google Earth Studio, I was able to use a photogrammetry software to first uh, generate point cloud based on those sequences, and then a denser cloud based on the tie points from the point cloud previously generated, and finally a fully textured model. Next step in the process is to go back to Google Maps and try to get a measurement for the location. Um, that measurement we can use to scale the generated environment geometry. Um, and that's done simply in the 3D package of your choice. Mine happens to be 3DS Max, Max for Life. And it just takes uh, one scaled reference objects and a few adjustments uh, to the pivot point, and you will have properly scaled Steam Geo, of course. It also takes a naked guy who is ready to hug the world as your human scaler. Maybe the technical term is six foot man. Much like a stack of apple boxes on set, this is our standard unit of measure tracking land, at least in mine, as weird as that sounds. And uh, when we're happy with the result, we export the geo to track an application where the rest of the magic happens. It's time to actually load in your newly minted RefGeo into a tracking application. Add the trackers to the duration of the shot. I like to make sure that the 2D tracking points that I'm adding to the plate are also available to identify in my RefGeo. It's a bit of a tedious process. I like to be confident in my trackers, so I skip the boring part for you. However, it's very important to pay attention to the point validity and footage noise, etc. Okay. The algorithms for solving or triangulating camera are pretty much the same across all applications, whether you're in 3D or synthized, as in this case, the camera solution is only as good as your trackers. Using this method, we try to take out some unknowns from the equation and provide you a spatially correct reference that will help the software determine the, the lens and the movement of the camera. I have overlaid the textured RefGeo at 50% opacity to the plate, 50-50 okay. mix. And it looks uh, pretty down close, provided that we started with nothing. Um, after the solve, I will track the interior camera and ultimately marry them into one stitch camera that will be used by CG and compositors. And by giving them our Rift Geo, they're free to add effects, color corrections, as well as paint, roto mask, and inclusion between plays. I will leave you with a final shot, and hopefully the stitch is not too obvious. Okay. Uh, well, this place, I just want to mention that if there's anyone out there thinking about getting into tracking, to really consider what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> okay. I think it's a, uh, I think a good tracker considers the past and the future of trying to work on the issues in the past, like getting the VFX loops to gather more data on set or add tracking points, etc. But also the future. How is the resulting camera going to be used? What geo or points should I give to an artist downstream that will help them? I think it's important to try other disciplines before ending up in tracking since you will uh, have a better understanding of what production needs. And after all, no shot exists, and no story can be told without a camera. Uh, it is a tracker's responsibility to bring the work that people did on set to post, and if the job is done right, no one will ever know. Cool. Right. Hey, so, Sergey, so yes, sir. before we show the second part of the presentation, mm -hmm. just because it was maybe not a little clear. Yeah, I've listened so. to it now. My voice was really bad, guys. I'm very <laughs> yeah, sorry. <that's, laughs> you were sick. You were sick. I was sick, yes. So um, the portion of the video where you went to Google Maps mm -hmm. and you saw the house all blurred out, could you just say that again, what, what would happen there? 
We thought it so was so sometimes was these uh, shoot locations that are you know constantly used in different shows, the owners or whoever is responsible, like they they basically petition Google to blur out the front of the house, you know. But luckily enough, um, that tool that I was using, uh, the Google Earth Studio. Uh, it's not really based on street view data. So they were able to provide the actual extruded geometry, you know, right. that I was able to capture into a 3D, you know, 3D model and then use that to cross-reference the plate and put the trackers in the right locations to that basically have right. you know, a, a real geo for that. So, yeah, so you were showing that Google Studio is basically the VIP backdoor to the kind of yes and it's interesting need, right it's interesting because it's a it's a fairly new tool from what i understand and you kind of have to request access you know it's not yeah. uh yeah it's not you use it also. it's yeah. it's, it's, you, it's great cool. right it's, yeah 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 it's great yeah it's, great. it's, it's but w what was really interesting is that uh you know, I, I was kind of skeptical about the quality of of those uh, of getting that geo out of it. You know, by using photogrammetry. But you know, if you actually think about it, the it's a completely computer generated environment. There's no motion blur. There's no lens distortion. There's nothing. It's just images sequenced. You know, one after another. So it's actually grabbing those. The photogrammetry software is easily can cross reference. Um, you know, the, the images in the sequence and then generate geo that looks and actually is exactly the size that it is in google earth so that's that's like skipping a step you know but um i think with this presentation the whole point was kind of you know in a perfect world and you know well of course we all live in a perfect world you know you always get the lidar and you always get the perfect measurements and the vfx soup puts the tracking markers with the x's everywhere and you know they light the green perfectly and everything but that's not the case you know sometimes you just end up with a shot that it somehow has to get done, you know, and they give it to you and you go, Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta think outside the box a little bit. Right. So I think it's uh yeah, it's an, it's an interesting thing. Which but is a great segue to mm -hmm. the second part of your presentation. The second. Yeah. Let's play that. Let's play where that we, team. where we, for a vastly different reason, you did not have access to data that you would Correct. Want to have. Yeah. Right. So we can, we can roll the second video. The quest question. Oh, sure. So, Mm -hmm. I assume that you guys will use like super scientific like measurement tools, but at the end it's just a box and you just scale it, really, just like all of us would be doing. <laughs> it's there's not too much magic behind this curtain. Okay, I, I'll okay. tell you that you know. But I mean, it's it's uh, it yes and no. You know, it, it it's case by case. But sometimes yeah. when you're just left with a box, you're gonna have to scale that box. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you you give me so much hope. So much help right now. Absolutely. No, listen. We, <laughs> come over. We're ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to dip into this, no problem. Next track and world adventure, I'd like to take you on as a little sensitive. Uh, because the show is still in production, I uh, will not be using any footage, but rather a sample of a similar footage that represents the problem I had to solve. Tracking and layout departments often are tasked with creating static lock-off or still camera for shots. Um, and usually it's a fairly simple process that involves a decent amount of guesstimating and recognizing parallel and perpendicular lines in the plate, uh, marking the dominant perspective, then feeding those lines into tracking software and getting back the camera with the lens matching the perspective provided. And this shot was no different. It's often FBI building, Washington, D.C., and it seemed straightforward. However, things didn't feel quite right with it, so I went to the trusted Google Earth to see what the problem could be. As it turns out, the facade of the building is not perpendicular or parallel to the rest of the structure, as it's following a slanted street. That discovery means that I cannot rely on all of the lines of the building that are visible and have to pick the back of the structure to place my perspective lines on. Not ideal as those lines are abstracted. And I'm also noticing a slight slope of the street, screen right, meaning I cannot use the street as perspective lines as it's not level with the roof. To make things easier, I decided to look around for other reference footage of the building and also hoping to find a 3D model of it that I could use to estimate my camera position from. I thought I was on Easy Street once I found a Google warehouse model of the building, and it looked like it was modeled from the map view, meaning it could rel I could rely on it, and the proportions uh, could make quick work of uh, estimating the camera. 
However, after a few head scratches and trying to use the model to estimate my camera, I realized that it just wasn't accurate enough. And now I need to generate my own. So Google Earth to the rescue, right? Well, as it turns out, Washington DC is a pretty protected place for obvious reasons. And it's even protected digitally. Going to Google Earth, you might be surprised as I was to find out that there are no 3D buildings within a certain designated area. And now I'm truly stumped. And then it occurred to me that maybe I can find stock footage or maybe a film would have that FBI building in one of its shots. And with any luck, it might be a long, clear, and have enough parallax that it will be able to scavenge survey shot from it. But alas, looking through all of the shots of National Treasure revealed only that Nick Cage has earned the right to be considered one. And the airspace above DC is just as tight as his performance in Raising Arizona. So no clear shots of the building that I can use. So back to Google Earth I went, and after walking the streets of DC using Google Street View, I realized that I can maybe screen grab a series of street images and run through the photogrammetry and get my survey of Red Geo that way. My celebration was short-lived once I realized that a lot of those Google Street View images are taken at different times throughout the years, and the lighting changes enough between the sections to eliminate a possibility of a clear geometry generation using photogrammetry, sadly. I was almost at my wit's end, and uh, only the fact that I had some partial solves come out from my screen grabs that made me look at Bing Maps. That's right, Bing Maps, who knew? And uh, as it turns out, they have a much smoother method of grabbing Street View data, and I ended up gathering enough screen grabs to formulate an actual survey shot that I was able to track. And one last piece of the puzzle remained. My solution error was low enough that the camera was moving smoothly in 3D space. However, the angle of travel was way too steep. And that's when I realized I had no way of knowing what the lens could be calculated from. My screen grabs made of a spherical rig on top of a Microsoft big map car. That puzzle was only solved once I measured and constrained distances between my survey trackers. And then it was a matter of dialing in the lens value resolving and checking until the perpendicular lines of the building and the real life were matching the constraint lines in my tracking application. The result uh, survey shot made very quick work of aligning the static lock-off shot that I started off in the beginning. I just needed to tell the application about common features and voila, I have properly scaled scene with perfectly aligned camera and very good estimate of the lens. To test out my work, I modeled an FBI building in 3D Max, 3DS Max using camera view and all of the faces matched. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope this wasn't too boring. And uh, I know I was speaking fast. I was really trying to cram as much as I could into this presentation. Thanks, everybody. And it was certainly was not too boring, at least not for me. It, okay. it's not for me either. It's yeah. Everyone awesome. learn about Bing Map. It's a thing. Yeah, I love that. That's the best line. Bing Maps. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm doing commercials here for Bill Gates. You know? just, yeah. I don't think he needs any more involvement. <laughs> so uh, I guess we can do a quick Q and A with Sergey. Um, I, I know that I know that Bruno has been chomping at the bit to ask some questions. So we'll, we're gonna just let you. I, I just want <laughs> so all of us are really into doing like you know photorealistic rendering and mm -hmm. crazy you know images so how does one move from this to become kind of an it specialized into like lidar scanning do you get your creative fix out of it is it still something mm -hmm. that you know is it yeah. enough or yeah yeah that's a that's a great question um and what's what's really strange is that I don't think you should approach tracking as you know like this is this is what I'm going to be doing from the start. Tracking is my you know perfect solution for my life and everything like that. It's it's something that you arrive at you know after you've done different disciplines. So uh, what's what was interesting to in my case is that I went to you know uh, art school for painting you know of all things and uh, and my first foray into 3D modeling or anything to do with that was actually my uncle taking me to his uh, the institution he was working on for a space program. Um, 
and playing with um, uh, AutoCAD or, you know, like 1.1 1 .1 or, you know, 0 0.1 or something like that. And it's something that like planted that seed that later I was able to get into the commercial world and do all sorts of things in, you know, in rigging, lighting, uh, not successfully lighting. I'm not, I'm not a greatest lighter, but, but being able to touch all these different disciplines that you kind of chisel away at something that gives you that fulfillment. And, uh, you know, after that commercial world was, you know, where I had to ha wear many hats, like just like Serge was talking about, you know, the similar thing of just hitting everything under the sun just to get something done. Um, I was able to, uh, you know, actually I was tapped by, uh, you know, a really good friend of mine, uh, Joe Gunn, uh, to, you know, to come over and help, you know, uh, work at this uh, little, you know, band ragtag group of kids over at Fuse Effects New York, you know, at the, <laughs> the beginning. So, and that's where he was showing me like all these disciplines that we needed to do to get these shots done. And I was actually doing a lot of uh, effects work. So I got to touch that, you know, I was already, you know, I could model, I could texture if I needed to, you know, I could do definitely effects. I was interested in that, you know, and, but tracking always came as a part of um, my skill set. just from even the commercial world. It was always the process of, okay, we're done with shooting live. How do we get this in? You know, how do we get this into the CG land? And that always fascinated me, you know, how accurately can we be at getting that process over? So once I had all these disciplines and I was, you know, decently proficient in all of them, you know, tracking started to appeal more and more, you know, because it is kind of a, you know, uh, a, a zero sum game. You either have it, you know, either it either works or it doesn't, it either tracks, it sticks or it doesn't, you know, and there's not many there's not much room for creative notes right but there's lots of room for creative problem solving you know in achieving that track to stick because um contrary to popular belief you know just putting a bunch of points on recognizable features is actually not actually going to generate uh you know a good track for you you kind of have to uh be the ai in a sense you know you have to use your head to to estimate what the software is going to expect to come up with the best possible solution that's going to match whatever happened on set. So there is there is plenty of uh, of um, you know creative expression. It's hidden, you know. It's kind of behind the scenes. It's there, and I definitely get my fix, you know, and things like that. Like where there is no playbook, you know. You just have to make that shot work somehow. So you go and you know you you make it work. Oh my god, I got a fly in here. I'm like Joe Biden in that in that, in that video. Anyway. Um, so that's 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 the that's the thing you know it's there is there is there is, there is a, like there is an overlap between artistic and technical and and it, you know it, it it is more of like a craft in a way you know that's how i look at it because when i started tracking um it wasn't so obvious what to look for you know it, it really wasn't and it was it kind of took a lot of experience to get to a point where now i can look at a shot and go oh no 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 that's going to be a problem guys you don't you don't think it is but it's there and i think that's the experience speaking rather than just knowing how the app works you know it's almost like intuitive at this point so yeah i, I find and i'll also find you know like earnest work in that you know you are you are like kim said you are getting to touch every shot you know or the shot that needs a camera and of course without it um there is no shot and as i said in the presentation it's you can't uh tell the story without it you know without a framing without you know, representation. And there is like a whole team of pre-production guys on set all working to make this little image, you know, and then they pass it over to us and we kind of have to do it justice and recreate it in CG. So it's like this, you know, oh my God, I don't want to say it, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a passing of from, you know, the physical to the digital to then later be compelling. So it's, it's like a, it's like a magical, whatever, you know, Stargate thing. I don't, I don't know what else. <laughs> anyway, so that's how I look at it, at least. I don't know if that's, if everybody else gets the same, you know, feeling of fascination, but I, I do, I like it. I enjoy it. Um, it's super tedious and it's extremely nerve wracking, you know, especially when it's deadline driven and you just, it's not sticking, you know, like, what are you going to do? But um, yeah. We persevere. We find ways to make it work. And I think that's where the discovery is. So, Bruno, we have three minutes left. Do we do one more question? And then... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. One more question. Come on. Um, do you have any... Any tips for people new to tracking? 
who are sure. looking to get into mm-hmm. tracking scanning beyond the phone consumer apps and stuff mm-hmm. like that is there anything that you would suggest they look into or path to follow yeah you know there is there is a, actually a pretty big overlap and you know within our our world and um metrology you know the, the 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 science of measuring things you know there's a pretty big overlap between that and and this and i would say looking at the tools that that metrology uses you know and, and those certified uh technicians of you know metrology they, they use the you know lidar and then you know um close structured scanning light scanning things like that i think that's that's kind of the foray into getting into this world once you understand the concepts of how these tools work i think it's 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 a you know that's like the next step from just grabbing your ipad and you know and and doing like a little lidar sweep or something like that which is actually valid i have used that on set and i've I've always suggested for people to use on set it's when there's nothing else available you know use your ipad you know with a lidar feature or your phone with a lidar feature but to get to kind of like a bigger level i think it's important to stay current with this technology like and like a recently i don't know if anybody follows this but they released you know this cross-referencing geo you know spatial aware drones that scan things on a flight path you know as they're flying their lidar scanning things and beaming all that information back and everything is you know just in like this one universe it's it's really impressive um i think that's something that you kind of have to look outside of the industry to then be able to apply it to the industry so I'm, I'm always i'm trying to stay current on all these things so that's my that's my hint look elsewhere and then try to you know, implement that in the, in, in the field. Yeah, I know. Cause I know you, what you do can tend to look boring or dry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but any artist, if, especially students who are just starting out, if you're trying to do something in visual effects, if you don't have, if you're m- matching to a live action plate, whatever mm-hmm. you're doing, you've got, I, I don't care how good your dragon looks or how well rigged it is or lit. <laughs> If it doesn't lock to a plate, if it's bouncing. you're trying to be, you should know how to do that stuff on your own, at, at least at a basic level of tracking. If you want to get into VFX and you're a one man, you know, team or something. So it's, it's, it's good stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Uh, this was a pleasure. Um, yeah. Sorry for the sound. That's the only, <laughs> the only thing. I can is say. it your dog or it's Kim's? That's my dog. That's, oh, my yeah, dog. that's why I'm muting myself. But Sergey, uh, coming from someone who's, who's tried a little bit his hand on tracking, mm-hmm. thinking that hey, it must not, must not that be difficult, I I can I, I'll 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 bow down to you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. It's incredible. Uh, I know how difficult it is. I tried my hand on this and I lost my temper a couple of times. <laughs> so it's. Patience <laughs> is is definitely a skill set. Yeah, that, yeah, and that's, know, yeah, that's 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 mm-hmm. not my strong suit. Uh, I don't know it's if you can show the image sure. here, but I'm not very patient. So it's yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Nice I've broken job. many keyboards, you know, at the, like, <laughs> yeah. zero hour. Just you know, this is not sticking. I don't know what else to do, and the shot is due in two hours. You know, killing oh. me now. Oh. So, but yeah. Wow. Anyway. Cool. So I guess that that that's a wrap. Yeah, I think so. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Sergey. Thank you, thank guys. You so much. Thank you very much.